God bless you. Cheyenne, it's good to have you. God bless you. And Darnell, God bless you. Thanks for coming today. Thank you all for being here today and being a part of our service and letting God touch your life. We're going to let the children go to their prospective classes at this time and uh, let them learn the things and tr valuable truths of God's Word. Amen. And the rest of us are going to learn something hopefully today too. Uh, I've been learning myself all week long. <laughs> and so uh, I hope I can share some good things in, towards you today that will help you and encourage you uh, in your walk in relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, our beginning verse is going to be uh, Psalm 122, verse 6. So you might want to turn to the Psalms, verse 120, uh, Psalm 122, verse 6. Uh, someone showed me the, the list of uh, scriptures that you were handed out earlier. If you did not get one, you're more than welcome to get one somewhere. I don't know where they're at exactly, but we'll have those available to you. I am not going to read every scripture on there. Just the <laughs> <laughs> but we will make reference to those scriptures. Uh, so that's why it's there. So you can take those home and you can look at them and you can reread them. <coughs> and hopefully meditate or contemplate what has been said and spoken today and what God has revealed uh, because that's part of our Christian discipling is to know what the Word of God says. And uh, sometimes uh, we can just, well, I know what the Scripture says. Uh, I don't know about you, I like to reread it sometimes because every time I reread it, I find something new and exciting about it. Uh, it doesn't always speak to me the same way. And uh, I don't know this. I don't know. I, I don't memorize the scripture like I used to, so I need to read it. <laughs> so it always helps me in that direction as well. But Psalm 122, verse six, is something that we're going to. Uh, it helps us too. It helps you too. Good. <laughs> Psalm 122, verse six. We're going to talk about Jerusalem, God's chosen city, and um, but I want us to look at why it's chosen and why God thinks it's special. Uh, something that I, I think that we need to begin to th contemplate as believers uh, that you and I need to understand that Jerusalem is going to be the capital of the world according to the biblical Amen. prophecy uh, that is declared to us. Jerusalem is going to be the center place of all worship according to the Bible. Jerusalem is going to be the place where the king of kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, sits upon the throne of David. And these are just some glimpses of why we need to be concerned about what's happening over the Middle East, especially particular this city called Jerusalem. And uh, we're going to give some historical information as well as biblical. And uh, I had to get on the internet a little bit to find some of this stuff because I didn't have my books with me. But the internet's a lot quicker to find in the books. So, and uh, I've, I've disarrayed my, my library a little bit. And if you look in the back room and hallway, you'll find that, man, it's a mess back there. But uh, I want to share some things. But let's read the verse in verse 6 of chapter 122 of the Psalms. It says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Father, we thank you for your word, which you're about to instill in our life today. We ask, Father, that you will speak to us in a way that will make sense uh, concerning your holy city. That we will understand the reasoning and why we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And why we need to pray for the people of Israel. And why we need to be expected of your soon return. And Lord, we give you praise and honor for what you're about to reveal to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, most of us have probably read this scripture at one point or another, and uh, we have not practiced what it has declared. Uh, I've been guilty of that, and so have you probably. Uh, we have not prayed for Jerusalem or the city of Jerusalem like we should. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The city of Jerusalem is probably the most controversial city in the world today. There's a lot of activity that centers around Jerusalem and the people of Israel. And there's a lot of reasoning why, uh, to the world's eyes, that they want to do away with this city and de they want to de de degrade it 
to the point to where it becomes just an ordinary city occupied by ordinary people who have no expectancy of a king. And sad to say, some of those are Israelites, yeah. people that actually live there. Then they don't understand the real meaning of the scripture concerning their own city. And, and we as people of faith, we need to recognize why it's important for us to pray for Israel. Pray for this peace of Jerusalem. Being a controversial city, it's not just modern times that this city has been in the news around the world. This city has been in the news for centuries. We may not have had the televisions, the radios, computers, or the satellites, but Jerusalem has always been a city sought after by lots of people. It has always been a city that has been a special place in the eye of God. Jerusalem is not a mystical city, as some would declare, going over to the Holy Land, I'm going to go walk through the, the, the gates of Jerusalem and I'm going to feel something, I'm going to feel like this and that, and I'm going to feel this mystical surge or spirit come against me. That's not what it's, Jerusalem is not all about. It's not about mysticism. You know, when you look at the Crusades and you look at the, the things that took place in the, um, say, a thousand or so years ago, you know, when these crusades started, everybody thought, we're going to go defend Israel and we're going to defend Jerusalem. And it was a mystical adventure for a lot of people. And it's not. But it has always been a city of controversy. This city has been chosen by God from a long time ago yes. to be a city in which He would dwell, that He would reside, that He would take notice of, and protect. And so let's look at some scriptures also found in the psalm. Psalm 132 verse 13 will give us a starting point. It says before the Lord has chosen Zion. Now Zion is one of the words that we will, or names that is given to Jerusalem. For the Lord has chosen Jerusalem or Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is Psalm 132 verse 13. And look at verses 14 through 16. This is my resting place for how long? Forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her, her priests uh, with salvation. And all her saints shall shout aloud for joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> It's going to be a joyful city. Is what I can understand through the scripture. The city of Jerusalem is going to be a joyful city. But the point is, in the first two verses there, that God says, I have chosen this city for my dwelling place forever. It's God's place. It's not what Israel, uh, Jacob desired. He didn't set out to say, well, I want to take this city and make it God's city. God has determined it before the worlds began that this would be his city. Right. Turn to Psalm 135, verse 21. Blessed be the Lord out of Zion who dwells in Jerusalem. I'm so glad God dwells where in Jerusalem. I preached a sermon one time that said God came out of Tema. Not true. It's just a statement. It's a, it's a long story. I won't go into it. But it was not a good sermon. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but anyway, here's what it says. The Lord dwells in Jerusalem. The Lord dwells in Jerusalem. Psalm 146 verse 10 is another scripture in the Psalms that we can apply to this. The Lord shall reign forever. O God, you're, O Zion, to all generations. Remember, Zion is another name for Jerusalem. And the Bible declares in Psalm 146, verse 10, the Lord shall reign forever in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is occupied by normal citizens of Israel, by Palestinians, and by various other groups. But one thing is certain, and yet to be revealed and seen among the people, is that the Lord Himself will reign. And one day He will. Preparations in heaven are being made for the return of Jesus Christ. The church is preparing itself, the called out ones, which is you, I, people of faith. 
or being prepared to leave this world and then come back and re reign with Him as priests and kings. Where? In Jerusalem. Amen. The city of God. Jerusalem is recognized as one of the oldest cities in the world. It's been around a long time. Jerusalem, appear, uh, uh, the word itself, the name, appears over 600 times in the Old Testament alone. Jerusalem is a Semitic word dating back to 1400 B.C. And the, one of the original sayings is Jerusalem. Jerusalem with the U-R-S-A-L-I-L-I-M uh, uh, sound. Jerusalem. The city itself first appears in the Bible in Genesis chapter 14 where Abraham, after conquering in five kings, comes back with the captives of Lot and the citizens of Sodom and Gomorrah. He comes back and the Bible says in Genesis 14 that the king of Salem, Melchizedek, the priest king, came and gave Abraham oil and wine and food. And the Bible says that Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth of all. This is the first place that is mentioned in the Bible that we know of that Salem, or which is another name for Jerusalem, is, appears. So we find that the city itself is called the city of peace. Doesn't seem like there's much peace in Jerusalem today. There's havoc, there's quarreling, there's mischief, there's bombings, there's destruction, there's uh, anarchy, there is conspiracy right. happening all around and in Jerusalem today. But one day the meaning of the city of peace will become a reality because the Bible says the Prince of Peace will rule and reign. Amen. And he will rule and reign in the city of peace. The priest that we find in Genesis chapter 14, Melchizedek, his name is mentioned there, and he's a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. He has no beginning, no end, no genealogy, but his name means King of Justice. And I say that for the reasoning of this, that Jesus Christ, when He comes again, will, will come as a King of all kings and a Lord of all lords. He will have a riot, a, an iron scepter in His hand and He will rule the nations with it. He will be a King of justice and He will rule in the city of peace, Amen. which will be the capital of the world. Jesus, Jerusalem and Jesus Christ together. Rabbis have the, went through the Old Testament scriptures, have found over 60 names for Jerusalem, and here is just a few of them. This is where that list of scriptures comes in. We find that the name Ariel is found in 1 Samuel chapter 1, chapter 29, verse 1. This, the name City of David, 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 7. The City of God, Psalm 46, verse 4, and also Psalm 87, verse 3. The city of the great king, and this is one of my favorites, found in Psalm 48, verse 2. The city of Judah, 2 Chronicles chapter 25, verse 28. The city of truth, Zechariah chapter 8, verse 3. Called the holy city, Nehemiah chapter 11, verse 1. A holy mount in Daniel chapter 9, verse 16. Jebus, Joshua chapter 18, verse 28. Perfection of beauty, Lamentations chapter 2, verse 15. Throne of the Lord, Jeremiah 3, verse 17. And Zion, again found in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 1. And these are just a few of the names that are found in this, the Bible concerning Jerusalem. I want us to be aware that the city of Jerusalem needs your prayers. The people, inhabitants... Yes of the city of Jerusalem needs your prayer. The Bible says pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we need to do that starting today as a congregation, as an individual believer in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the reason I say that is because this book, which is inspired by the Holy Spirit, 
approved by God is the book in which our King, Jesus Christ, will also use in reference and in judgment to the world and to His people. When we are called upon to do something that is commanded in the Word of God, it is not an option for us. And we need to start praying for the peace of Jerusalem. In fact, let's do that right now. Father, we ask that your peace, which comes through your Son, Jesus Christ, will come upon the city of Jerusalem. Father, you've declared in your word that we are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we pray for the peace that you want to give it. You desire this city. You placed it in your heart. You call it your dwelling place. So Lord, come with great power and glory and might and fulfill your word, even as we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Lord, this city has many enemies that are raging against it even this very hour, who are plotting and desiring the destruction of this city and its people. But Father, we pray that you will give peace to this city and its surrounding area to your whole people of Israel and this holy city. So Lord, we pray this peace over the city, that the enemies that will come against it will be thrown down, and the enemies that rise up against it will be desolate and put to shame. Father, we thank you for the protection that you place around this city today in your chosen people, Israel. In Jesus' name, amen. Some may ask, how did Jerusalem become the capital city of Israel? Let's turn to the Bible, please, and turn to 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 6, 5 and 6. 2 Samuel chapter 5, 6 and 7. This particular city meant a lot to David. It was occupied by Jebusites, which are families of the Canaanites. And Israel had not fulfilled its obligation by ridding the land of the Canaanite nations as required by Moses and Joshua to do. Here we are several hundred years later, and David is king at Hebron, and the elders have come down and said, we want you, David, to be king over all of Israel. Not just two tribes, but all of Israel. And David accepted their offer. And so, in verses 6 and 7, we find that David gave a command to his leadership. There he says, whoever takes the city of Jerusalem will become chief captain of all army, all, of all the armed forces. Now that would be quite an honor from the king to say, wouldn't it? And so the, the plan was made. In verse 6 we find that the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who spoke to David. Now this is the insult that they gave to David. You shall not come in here, but the blind and the lame will repel you, thinking... David cannot come in here. They were thinking, well, if we just insult the king and look at David and tell him he can't come, he'll just walk away. But listen what it says here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, that is, the city of David. He took it. And from that moment on, Jerusalem became the capital city of Israel. And in 1967... In the Six Day War, which happened roughly around this time frame, Israel once again took the city and declared it their capital. Fulfillment of biblical prophecy. These things all must take place. It's called the Yom Kippur War. Guess what? The Yom Kippur is on Wednesday. The Six Day War. See, we're living 
in the day in which the Word of God is so true to us as believers. And if we realize how what the Word says about His holy city and about His people and about how we are to be a part of that, it makes the Bible so much alive for each one of us and the hope and re expectation of the return of Jesus Christ becomes a reality more so than just a dream or fantasy in some people's minds. It's the truth in which we live by. Amen. So we find that Jerusalem is the city capital, the capital city of Israel. And Israel has, as well as Jerusalem, has many enemies. Jerusalem itself has been destroyed twice. Jerusalem has been besieged 23 times in its history. Jerusalem has been attacked 52 times. Jerusalem has been captured 44 times. Sometimes brought to the ground. Sometimes walls partially left standing. But multitudes of people have died in defense of this city. And many of these Jewish people that have died and people that have fought for this city said, wonder where God is. Well, God hasn't been far. And God is about to rise from His throne like a man waking out of a sleep. Oh, Lord Jesus. Yeah. And He's about to grab His sword and He's about to judge this world. Yes. That's what the Word says. Yes. That's right. Because he knows who his people are. And he knows that his dwelling place has been desecrated by an ungodly people. Now we can name names of all the nations that are there. And we're going to live a, give you a list, biblically, a biblical list of the nations. The nations that are trying to destroy this city today are the same ones that have died to destroy it for hundreds right. of years, right. if several centuries and so to find out who these people are, let's take a look in the Word of God. Let's go to Psalms chapter 2. There'll be one place, and then we'll go to Psalm 83. But Psalm 2, verses 1 through 6, just to kind of lay the groundwork of some things here. Psalm 2, verses 1 through 6. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in peace and cast away their cords from us. He who, this is talking about God, the God who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then He shall speak to them in His wrath and distress them in His great and deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill in Zion. Now turn with me to Psalm 83. And let's look at verses 1 through 8. And in this particular psalm, we are about to get a picture of some of the nations who have different names in our world today. The names that we know of some of these nations today are Syria, Libya, and of course Egypt, Edom is... Uh, some of the uh, Ye 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 Yemen and, and Saudi Arabia and it's uh, uh, Iran and Iraq <coughs> Syria these nations may not be written here in that form but their descendants are alive today That's right. That's right. Amen. and they have one desire and that is to do away with Israel Right. and its holy city right. and to defame the God which is creator of heaven and earth. Right. Here's what it says in Psalm 83 verse 1. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace. Do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult or a big noise and a, and a ruckus. And those who hate you have lifted up their head they have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel be remembered no more. Have we not heard that today yeah. in our society? Yeah. That's right. They have counseled together with one consent. They have formed a confederacy against you. 
the tents of Edom, the Ishmaelites, Moab, the Hagarites, Geba, Ammon, Amalekite, Amalek, Philistine, and the inhabitants of Tyre. Assyria also has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. All these are descendants, all these Arab nations that surround Israel today that are coming against him with violence are descendants of these nations listed here. You might say they are bad seed. They're destructive. They have one intent. That is to destroy God's people and God's dwelling place. What alarms me today is that we live in a society that should be a friend of Israel. Not because it's a political thing. It's because we who believe in the Word of God need to stand with Israel. Right. Right. You may not want to call them brother or sister, but technically we serve the same king. So they are, in some respect, the citizens of the kingdom of God. We are spiritual citizens of that same kingdom. And we need to uplift God's purpose and intent for Israel. Amen. And we need to stand with Israel. Right. And we need to do what we can to see that anything that is going against Israel politically and through our legislation or by our laws or by our treaties that are being signed by our government, we need to make a stand and say no to all the garbage that's coming against Israel. Amen. That's right. right. Amen. We need to do our part. Not only pray, but we need to talk to our Congress and our senators and our administrations that are in governing forces and powers and declare to them that we need to make Israel a priority and we need to stand with Israel to defend it. A few weeks ago, the DNC of this nation wanted to remove God out of their platform and out of their conversation. They also wanted to remove Israel, Jerusalem, anything that had to do with the Bible away from their platform. This is what people in our society are wanting to do. We have two major political parties. We have a Republican, we have a Democrat. Democratic parties. These are our parties. These parties differ in their point of view toward Israel. For us to denounce God and to withhold our help from Israel is a death sentence for this nation. If we ever wanted to see this nation recover and to once again be a nation that God had intended it for us to be, then we need to do our part to pray and to stand with Israel politically. Did you know, I don't know if you knew this, but if you can look at, take the, look, at, look at that word Jerusalem in your Bible, and what do you see in the middle of it? USA. 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 Now, I don't think that has any, politi- any prophetic thing in there. I just want you to be aware of it. That maybe some way, There's a reason why we align ourselves with Israel. God had a purpose. We don't know that reasoning or full purpose of it. One day we will. But I'm here to declare to us today that we need to make every effort to stand with this nation. Some of you may not agree. You think, well, the Palestinians need to have their right, their property. Let me tell you something. This has been God's property for hundreds of years, if not centuries. God has already declared that it's His dwelling place forever, and He will reign in this place forever. And when He sets foot on this earth, which may happen at any time... Did you know in the midst of Rosh Hashan, the trumpet can sound? Wouldn't that be great? To be just hearing the trumpet sound and boom! You know? 
And yet, sadly to say, there are men and women of various religious organizations that are wanting to side against Israel. Those are organizations and ministries that you need to far fetch yourself from. Get away from. Because if we become a complacent individual, which means we do nothing, then we are agreeing with the enemies of Israel. And if we agree with the enemies of Israel, the same judgment that God has pronounced upon these nations and upon their descendants will also come upon those who agree with them. Because if we are consenting, then we're condoning. And if we're condoning, we're acting in as a part of. And we're not going to be a part of destruction of Israel. We are going to stand with Israel. But Israel is such a small nation. Is uh, Jerusalem is just a kind of a, a not a very large city? How can they defend themselves against this um, monster machine uh, of conspiracy against, coming against them? How can that happen? How can they defend themselves? God has made it very clear how He's going to take care of Israel. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter fifty-four for a moment. In verse 17, this is a promise that God has given His people. And yet we Christians, we, we hold to this too. We take this as our promise as well. But it's really meant for the nation of Israel. In chapter 54 of Isaiah, verse 17, it says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against Israel or against its people or its cities shall prosper. And every tongue which rises up against you, you, Israel, Jerusalem, shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we already have a promise from God that He is going to defend Israel. There will be nuclear explosions. There will be war. There will be devastation. Nations from the east, and from the north, from the south, even from the west, will come against Israel. Israel will become, as Zechariah chapter 3 declares, a stumbling block to all the nations. Israel, Jerusalem will become a thorn in these people's flesh and they will come against it with all that they have. You know what God says? Bring Bring it on. You know why? Because God says, I will stand and I will defend my people, my city. Psalm 34 verse 7 says this, The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear Him and delivers them. Turn with me back to Psalm 125 verse 2. Again, let's look at the scripture concerning Jerusalem and its people. Psalm 125 verse 2. Well, let's read verse 1 and 2. Those who trust in the Lord are like, are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. So we know Jerusalem is going to be around a long time because it says Mount Zion is going to live forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds His people. Hear what it says. So the Lord surrounds His people from this time forth and for how long? Yeah. Ever. You think God's going to let this city be destroyed? No way. You think He's going to let His people be destroyed? No way. God has already spoken a word for His people and for this city and for that nation. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5. It says, For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire around her. Who's her? Jerusalem. And I will be the glory or the Spirit in her midst. God is going to be a wall of fire. You know, the enemies of the Israel and Jerusalem will come against it with all they have, but God says, I will turn it aside. I will turn it aside. I want to show you an interesting scripture found in Isaiah 31. So if you'll turn with me, please, to Isaiah 31, verses 4 and 5.
This is something I think is very in interesting. And maybe you can see it politically or see it as God prophetically as I do. Not politically, but prophetically. Uh, God defending Israel. It says there in verse 4, For thus says the Lord has spoken to me, as a lion roars, and a young lion over his prey. But you know the world is roaring right now, like a lion against Israel. When a multitude of shepherds is summoned against him, he will not be afraid of their voice, nor be disturbed by their noise. I like this next part. For the, so the Lord of hosts will come down and fight for Mount Zion. I don't know about you, the Bible declares in, in Exodus chapter 15, verse 3, that God is a man of war. And if I understand the Scripture right and see what God has done in the past about His enemies, I don't think I would want to be an enemy of God. I think I would want to be a friend of God. It says, and I like, this is the unusual part of this verse here. Like birds flying about, so the Lord of hosts will defend Israel, Jerusalem. Defending it, He will also deliver it. Passing over, He will preserve it. Like eagles, like birds flying about. You know what that is a type of? Airplanes. Fighter jets. As they fly over Jerusalem, over Israel, they will defend it. And God will deliver Israel, Jerusalem, from its enemies. Now, I believe the rapture of the church will take place before this actual event takes here. Because this is a picture of what happens during the tribulation period, war, uh, preparing for Armageddon. But I also know the promise. <coughs> Pray for the peace of Jerusalem and those that love her may prosper. I uh, talked to my parents some time ago and they gave me a little, ins a little clue about some of my heritage. You know, it's nice to find out what's in your closet. <laughs> or is it? You know, no horse thieves, but I do have a great great grandmother on my dad's side that is of Jewish descent which I thought was pretty interesting and so I, I, I when I realized that I said no wonder I am like I am <laughs> you know no wonder I feel this compassion and this love for Jewish people and for Israel you know, I visited Israel in 87, which is a long time ago. And, you know, I felt like it was home in some respect. And if you, even as a believer, if you, even if you're not of Jewish descent, there is a connection that makes you feel like it's home. Because really, when it's all said and done, that's where home will be. We're all going to be there. But as I realize that God promises a blessing for those who pray for the peace of Jerusalem, who love her well-being, who seek her well-being, they will be blessed. In World War II, during the Holocaust, there was a man named Schindler. And you've heard of the movie Schindler's List. Mm -hmm probably have seen it, some of you. Schindler was a German, but he had a compassion for the Jewish people. And he saved thousands of Jewish men and women, children, from the fires that burned, that brought destruction to their, to their livelihood and who they were. There is a graveyard that has nothing but Jewish people that were buried that survived the Holocaust. And in that graveyard 
there's also a Gentile and his name is Schindler because he took compassion probably given by God for his people and that man is blessed because he's the only Gentile in that that graveyard he's recognized as a hero in the Jewish culture in Jewish history I say that for the fact is that we can do something for God by praying by standing up and becoming a friend of God's chosen people he said that you'll be blessed those who seek the good and peace of Jerusalem will prosper I can't tell you what kind of prosperity that is I don't know I just know what the word means it means good things it means provisions it means blessings it means security it means protection it means um, uh, just God walking with you did you know that's a blessing in itself did you know that and so we need to take God at his word and honor it maybe the scripture will also give us insight to this Psalm 1 verses 1, 2, and 3 most of you probably can quote this it says blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the path of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful that means blessed is the man who doesn't take sides against God but his delight the man who loves God the man who loves God's people but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law he meditates day and night and that man that woman he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper I don't know about you but that opens up the whole spectrum of God's blessing in your life and maybe it's time we begin to practice that blessing in our life by praying for the peace and safety of Jerusalem and Israel here's another promise we can add to that some of you feel like you're very small in this world insignificant but here's a blessing and a promise for you if you'll take into practice the scripture in Psalm 122 verse 6 pray for the peace of Jerusalem here's a promise for you it's found in Job chapter 8 verse 7 though your beginning was small yet your latter end will increase abundantly and I believe that being for you if you're looking for God's provision God's help in this life you may feel like you're insignificant right now but if you begin to practice God's word in obedience the blessings will begin to flow mightily in your life and they will be abundant and they will increase because God's word is true and God is faithful to his word I'm encouraging you to do that so in the days to come we're in the days of decision making one thing is sure like I said last week our decisions made for Jesus Christ already we've already made a decision for that or we wouldn't be here and remember he's our king so we honor our king by obeying his word so between now and November 6 you and I need to be students of the word and know what this word says concerning what we need to do concerning his people and concerning how we should live as a nation and make the decisions proper not according to political party but according to what God's word says That's right. Amen. and when we do that we will know in our heart that we made the right decision. That's right. And that's the important thing. Because if we align ourselves with the enemies of God, always remember that, if we align ourselves with the enemies of God, we will face the judgment they will get. Right. If we align ourselves with God and who He wants us to align with, then we will find the blessing of God in our life. 
we got to make that decision. You can make that. Let's stand. Father, we're asking for wisdom to be manifested in our life today. To be a people that will be affirmed, resolved, and resolute in our commitment to you and your word and to your people, Israel, and to the holy city of Jerusalem. We will pray daily for the people of Israel and for the peace of Jerusalem because your word has declared for us to do that. And we will honor the words of our King and our Lord. So Lord, empower us with the Holy Spirit. Remove the doubts. Remove the, uh, the indecisions. Remove the, the fear of today. And put the hope and the promise of tomorrow in our life. Knowing that your word will be fulfilled. And Lord, we thank you again for the blessing that you give to your people as they honor your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I want you to go in the presence of the Lord, go in the peace of God, and be blessed. Greet our guest, and hopefully we'll see you tonight, 6 o'clock. God bless you.